Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. In this video we're going to be concerned with grinding a 60 degree threading tool like this. Now I've talked about uh, these tools in another video so I'm not going to get into the angles and all of that but just basically how to grind it. It is not easy to do freehand. As a matter of fact it's close to impossible for a beginner, especially a 16 year old boy, to do this. So we're going to make a jig and uh, then we're going to grind this on the bench grinder or a belt sander so that we have the exact geometry that we want 60 degrees and then the angle on the top nice and smooth without any facets on there and uh, that's today's job you need to go back and Take a look at this video here. Do a search for tool bit grinding number three, tubal cane, and that'll get it for you. That's going to discuss all of the angles for a threading tool. So I'm not going to go over that now. It's already been done. Also, be sure and watch my video that I just made on how to dress a grinding wheel so that you have a good surface. Keith Fenner has also done a nice uh, video. Look that up on... Uh, dressing wheels and he's using a little tool grinder. I do not have one of those. I just have a bench grinder. I wish that I did have a tool grinder like that but if uh, those of you that have one out there have a big advantage over the rest of us. Now here's what you'll need. Here's our high speed steel and here's cold roll steel. Just a piece of quarter inch square key stock. You ought to practice with that because it's cheap and it's, uh, it grinds much faster and uh, if you want to practice I would use uh, this type of uh, steel. It produces quite a, a big burr compared to high speed steel but yet uh, you'll get the idea of how to do things and you'll do it cheap. And you'll need uh, your <clears throat> center gauge, your 60 degree center gauge to determine if you're getting the right angle. Here's a tip. If you're going to attempt to do this free-handed without the jig that I'm going to show you, and you probably will do it this way, it might help greatly if you put a series of parallel lines on there that are, are 60 degrees so that your eye can follow those. And here's how I laid those out. Just put a, a straight edge up against the wheel of some kind. And using your center gauge, if you lay that up against it. We've already dressed the wheel. And then you can mark it with a sharpie. I like to do that when I'm grinding drills too with a, a 59 degree angle. But that is something for your eye to follow as you lay the uh, tool bit up against the wheel. And that's going to help you get your 60 degrees. You might also want to put a little bluing on here or layout die and mark it at 60 degrees with the protractor or with this. This is kind of clumsy. Works a little bit better setting your protractor for 60 degrees and marking this. But you might want to use layout lines. I'm going to show you on a larger wooden model, but this clearance or relief here, the end clearance is very necessary. And in order to do that, uh, you're also going to see your angle here as you start to grind. And the tool must be not held uh, directly flat like this, but at an angle. And always move back and forth across the wheel so you're not grooving the wheel. Same thing when you do the other side. You must tip it like this. Let's get a little closer view of that. you're tipping it. Now your work is going to get very hot very fast so have your water pot handy and therein is part of the problem that you have to keep taking the tool off of the wheel in order to cool it and then you lose your angles and your reference and when you put it back on there you tend to start a new angle or a new facet that looks like your wife's diamond ring and we don't want that. Now I've laid out this uh, soft steel here, so I do have some uh, reference, some lines to follow. Now this is very, very difficult for a 16-year-old boy to do, especially if he spent the last 10 years 
playing video games and has no shop experience at all. That's why this method is not even suggested. It's so much better if you make the jig that we'll talk about here presently. And here we go with the freehand method. Be sure and wear safety glasses in addition to the guards that are already on the grinder. Notice how I'm working back and forth across the wheel. And I'm using the coarse wheel here, not the fine. Cool it off and you're going to burn your fingers. See how this angle starts appearing? I had to relay out that line because the heat uh, removed my layout lines. So we're about done with the first side. And we may have to come back and touch that up. But see how smooth that is? Now I'm going to start the other side and see what happens. Okay, we're getting close to the final line. Now, it might help you as you do this, when you put it back on the wheel, let it float a little bit to find the old uh, angle, rather than force it right in and start producing a new angle. When you're ready to start checking your angle, take your center gauge, and you can use any one of the grooves here, depending on the size of your tool, but uh, I like this large one on the side, get some white in the background or hold it up to your fluorescent light so you can see if there's any uh, uh, light coming through. And there we've got it pretty close. Not as close as we can get it with the jig, but it's pretty good. Now when you grind these uh, soft steel blanks, you're going to get quite a burr. It rolls over from one side to the other, and that uh, needs to be removed really before you check it with the with the gauge. It's not showing up real well with that with that white background now, but there it is. And of course, we've turned it blue because of the heat. And we've got plenty of end clearance. We'll talk about the top here in a minute. But that's it for the soft steel and doing it freehand. Now we'll talk about the jig and grinding an actual high-speed steel bit. Here's a little grinding jig that I made. And it's just made out of aluminum. It's about three-quarters thick and inch and a half wide. And it doesn't take very long to make one of these. These are quarter inch slots with a quarter inch end mill that will hold your, uh, your bit. And this is a little bit loose. Some These bits vary in, uh, in size. The last one I put in here was a nice snug fit. But probably need this hole down here to hold it in place. Now on the front of this I've milled a little bit of uh, clearance, 15 degrees, so that this bottom edge doesn't hit the grinding wheel. And you can use this on any kind of grinder, a bench grinder, or a little belt sander, or a tool grinder like uh, Delta Made, and other companies as well. 
Now this still requires a little bit of skill to use because I haven't provided any kind of guide on the back. You could of course do that, have some kind of a, a ledge here that would allow you to slide it across your tool rest, but again that requires accurate tool rests on the grinders. So I'm going to put uh, the high speed steel in there and clamp it down with this little clamp and uh, then we're ready to grind. In order to use this jig you're going to need to uh, tilt your uh, tool rest and I'm just putting a square on to show you that it's that's not a good way to do it anyway but uh, that I have tipped it down it is not level anymore with the table this end is lower that's going to give you that end clearance now that's going to vary greatly with the kind of grinder you got or what size your tool rest is and uh, you need to practice that and just uh, c come upon that by a trial and error what, what that angle is going to be because the idea is you'd like to just slide this back and forth on the tool rest and the other thing about this it still takes a little bit of skill and on this tool rest here I'm following uh, my, this edge right here with my eye and attempting to keep the jig parallel with it. That may not be possible on some of the grinders with a real small <coughs> cheap stamped tool rest. This is a particularly nice grinder. We got a little bit of room to work here. We got a little bit of a table. You don't always have that. But we're going to work that back and forth and if you don't keep this parallel with the edge here which also means it's parallel with the wheel you're not going to get your 60 degrees. So some experimentation and practice will be necessary. I just dressed the wheel off camera real lightly. It didn't take much. So we're going to put this on. Notice the different color of sparks for high speed steel. Now this is going to take a lot longer than the soft steel. Also we're going to need to cool it often. So I'll dip the whole thing into the, the water. But the aluminum also tends to absorb a lot of the heat and conduct it away from the tool. I'm going to do some of that off camera now because it's going to take too long. This is what we've got so far. See how smooth that surface is? And we want to grind this side till it's a little bit past uh, the middle. Now what I'm doing here, and I seem, I seem to think it works a little better, is to try to keep this edge parallel with the face of the wheel rather than the back edge parallel with the back of the tool rest because that's where, what my eye is following. And as you move it back and forth, try not to do or to rock it. You want to keep it as parallel back and forth as you can. We're halfway done, so I reverse the tool and the jig. I don't worry too much about uh, overheating it and getting a little bit of blue on it, which means it's over 600 degrees. This is high speed steel and you're not going to take the temper out at uh, just 600 degrees. Now I know there's somebody that's going to disagree with me, but that's the way I feel. See how nice that works? And there we are. Now I'm going to put some close up pictures pictures of this at the end of the video done with another camera because I can't get that close with this video camera. Now be careful on the grinder. In my 35 years in a school shop, in a machine shop, I only had several bad accidents and one was on the grinder 
and a boy took the tip of his finger off up to the end of the nail on a big grinder and it'll cut it off just as uh, as clean as can be it didn't even bleed much so those grinding wheels can be wicked keep your fingers out of them and wear your glasses and goggles at all times here's an alternate way of grinding I happen to love this 2 inch by 48 inch balder <coughs> sander grind. I guess they call it a sander grinder and I use this often for tool grinding with a nice sharp belt and uh, we got a nice flat platen <clears throat> we got a little tool rest that we can set at angle so this works just perfect I like to grind uh, drill bits on this as well but now I'm going to grind another one using the jig and I'm going to do it in soft steel to expedite matters a few minutes ago I talked about this 15 degree angle on here and it was a relief so I could get closer to the grinding wheels but also serves as a gauge for me to set the angle of the tool rest on this little sander to give me the right end clearance. I sometimes use an oxyacetylene goggles with clear uh, lenses in them on the grinder that protects your entire area of your eyes. Now the beauty of uh, the belt sander and the little uh, tool grinder as opposed to a bench grinder is that we have a flat surface that we're grinding up against rather than a round wheel. So we're getting a flat surface here rather than a uh, concave surface. And there we're about halfway done. Notice the clearance angle. I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. And there we are on that. Now that soft steel again produces a horrendous burr there. So that's what you're seeing. Now we always have some burrs on the tool. I'm very hesitant to tell you to hone it. Some of you will want to hone the burrs off, but often you can do more damage with a hone than you do good. Especially was true uh, in a high school shop. But if you want to uh, hone the top, simply doing that is going to uh, take that burr off. One other thing now, if you have too sharp of a point on there, I mean actually coming to an incredibly acute point, there's a tendency for that to want to break off when you take too deep a cut as you're threading. So sometimes removing just a little bit of that and forming a radius or a little bit of a flat on there is beneficial. I guess I didn't show you yet how very accurate of an angle we can get that with that little jig. Now it really needs to be held up to a light but I'm just uh, that won't show up on camera so I'm showing you this way that it's really right on or you know within a half a degree depending on how accurate you are even using the jig how much you let the thing uh, move around on you. Now there's two different kinds of tool holders that you might use. One is the traditional holder. Here's a straight holder. And uh, if we put the tool in there, of course it's going to be presented at about a, a 16 degree angle or something like that. Uh, uh, these tool holders, I'm not sure exactly what it is. If you use this type of tool holder, the job is done and you're ready to use that tool as is. I'll show you some other pictures uh, at the end of the video 
in regards to how that tool is presented to the work. But if you're using this type of tool holder, the end needs to be, or I should say the top, needs to be ground at uh, the same angle that the tool holder is, something like 15 degrees. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. But if you're using the spring type tool holder or some others that are straight, you can leave the top flat like that. Again, it would be beneficial to take just a little bit off the point there, if you, if you can do that without doing a lot of damage. Now let's grind this, and we're going to do it on a little belt sander. I prefer that, because uh, it has a flat surface rather than a, a round surface. But you can use a grinder, because that's probably what most of you are going to have available. I've squared up the little work rest with my Sterrett double square, four incher, which I love. I've had forever. Actually, it was my dad's. Now, right here, I put a line that's uh, around 15 degrees, the, the angle of the tool holder that I just mentioned. And if we lay, this is the soft steel one again, if we lay that on there, parallel to uh, that layout line there, and move it back and forth a little bit, we're going to get that top uh, rake angle. And there we are. That works a lot better than a bench grinder. If you're going to grind that top angle on the, the little craftsman, again, put an angle on there, watch your fingers, and then you can just move it back and forth like this. Not as easy to do as on the belt sander. And my 12-year-old grandson just showed up to watch. He wanted to see this in person. He didn't want to have to wait and watch it on YouTube. Say hi, Jordan. Hi. Well, that's it, men. That's how to uh, grind a 60-degree threading tool. Now, you could modify this to uh, grind a 29-degree Acme threading tool, which I have in this tool holder right now. So you can make one of these for whatever angle you need. And it's pretty simple to make if you have a milling machine. And you might want to do that. I'm not providing any instructions on how to do that because it looks kind of obvious. Now stay tuned at the end of the video here, after what I uh, say, t to look at some close-up still shots of some of these tools that I just ground. Happy machining. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.